All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So the 2020 Soul Train Awards. Let's just jump right into it here. Got my little notes. Normally when I have my notes, they're on this little tripod in front of me. So if you ever see me talking and I start looking here, it's because I'm trying to find my bullet point that I wrote. But anyway, it's in the phone tonight. So I enjoyed the show overall. I think with the deck of cards that they were given, they met their mark. And I say that because again, in this current COVID era that we're living in, all of the award shows have had to find ways to condense and repurpose themselves and restructure how they're going to do a show to fit in this current era where it's not feasible to put, you know, six, seven, eight, nine thousand people in a room and have this big elaborate show. And so with what they were able to do, I enjoyed it. I did think the roster was a little slim this year, but you know what? Honestly, I think it balanced out because this year's show, I think, was only two hours. I don't know if that's always been the case, but I felt like it was a perfect balance of time. It didn't feel like you were just stuck in there because sometimes with some of the award shows, you know, they start hitting three hours and 10 minutes and three hours and 15 minutes. And I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm sitting through Shutter Island again. <sighs> that's another story. The movie was all right, but we went to see it at midnight. I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but man, that, that was the longest movie. Um, anyway, so let me get into the show. So of course you had Tashina Arnold, Tisha Campbell host the show and open it. I always enjoy the two of them. They have a really great chemistry. I think a lot of it plays to the fact they're, that they're childhood friends. Like they've grown up together since, you know, the teenage years and they just balance off each other. There's an energy that they have where if one drops the ball, the other can pick it up. And it's almost like they know what the other's gonna do before they do it. And they have a perfect way to counterbalance all the energy. So I always enjoy seeing the two of them. I don't know why they don't have a sitcom together. Like, I don't know why there hasn't been a sitcom for just the two of them with the two of them as, you know, the stars. Um, I'm sure that's something that could still happen in the future, but I've just always seen in the back of my mind the two of them starring in some kind of sitcom because they just there's a there's a an energy that they have that I think a lot of people enjoy because they come off as so relatable. But of course, they did a really great job. You had Adam Blackstone, who of course is the musical director, and you know he's the go-to guy for literally all of the award shows at this point, and not just award shows, but a lot of the artists too. Because again. When you look at this guy's resume, I mean, he's worked with everybody from like Jay-Z to Dr. Dre, Nicki Minaj, Mary J. Blige, The Roots, uh, Jill Scott, Janet Jackson, just artist after artist after artist. Like, imagine how dope his phone contact list is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure he got everybody in there. He'd be on the phone sometimes like, oh, shoot, hold on. Let me call you back. This Jay-Z asking if I can do his tour again. I just told him I'm busy. I'm doing somebody else's. You know, they got me doing this big festival right now, but... Yeah, he has a, a dope resume, and I think what I appreciate about Adam Blackstone, as far as all of the shows that he's been the music producer of, or the music director of, is that everything is so polished and well put together. Like, I have yet to see a show he's put together where the music was trash, or the, the background singers were trash, or the band was trash. Like, everything always gets so enhanced, and sounds so grand, and, and so big. You know, it, the only other time I can think of any kind of show that had that same kind of essence i would definitely say it would have been maybe the arsenio hall show back in the day um i don't remember there being too many performances on the arsenio hall show that weren't good like literally anybody who went on his show ate the stage i don't know if that was like an unwritten rule but every single act i've seen mine is maybe like one or two or three i mean they just go out there and they, and they just kill it you know what i mean and so Adam Blackstone has a gift. He's definitely a gem. So he should definitely start getting his flowers soon, I tell you that. And I also like the intimacy of the show. Some people didn't like that the stage and the spacing was so small. And some felt like, oh, it feels like I'm at a nightclub. But I think that kind of, that was the perfect aesthetic for this kind of show. It worked. And it reminds me of a happier DC pre-COVID. Um, and even like a DC before the change. It just reminded me of going to all those different open mic nights. For those in the DMV, like, I don't know if you remember, but like Bohemian Cavern off U Street, like, I remember Wednesday nights in the basement floor in the little cave. They used to always have this group that would come up from Richmond, and it was this band, and you know, you I forgot how much you pay to get in, but you go to the open mic night, literally, you just give the band a song that you want to perform, they know how to play it. And if they didn't know how to play it, you know, just start singing, and they'll play around and figure it out, but it gave me that kind of memory, where it's kind of like you and your friends, and everybody's just kind of hanging out, everybody's vibing, and you know, there's some talent on the stage, just, you know, just killing and eating it. So... I enjoy the aesthetic of how everything was set up. Um, as far as the performances, because I'm over here ranting a little bit, uh, Brandy was the first one, and by the way, good for her getting an award. Um, I enjoyed Brandy's performance. She performed Say Something, and I want to say she did Borderline, right? Say Something is one of the songs that really stuck out to me on B7. Say Something and Rather Be. Those are the two that really jumped out to me, so I was happy that um, that song got some love at the Soul Train Awards. She did a really great job. Um, sounded really good as well. Um, 
Let me see here. Ella May. I forgot what the name of the song was, but I'll say this. I like the song and I like the performance, um, but I do think the song fits better as an album track. I don't know if they're pushing that as a single. It's a song to me that is just kind of there. It's not a bad song. It's it's good. I actually actually I, I actually like the song, but um, I I just think in the current era that we're in, where a lot of artists have a very similar sound, you want to really make sure that whatever you're putting out there stands out. I like her other single that's out, the one with the Herb Albert sample. I really enjoy that song. But you know, I still like the performance. I kind of like the costume she had as well. It kind of gave me a essence of a few different artists. But you know, kudos to her. Um, of course, she was in good voice as well, so that always helps. Let me see. Huh, Jasmine Sullivan. Um, let me just put my phone down for Jasmine. I'll give her a good minute. Um, Jasmine Sullivan. I'll say this. That woman has a gift. And I was saying this on my little social media earlier. Her voice is like... It's like you're on a roller coaster. And you know how when the roller coaster is making the climb and then right when you get to the top and you're getting ready to drop... Her voice is that feeling of adrenaline when you're looking down and you know that the thing is about to drop. And you know that you're going to enjoy yourself if you're somebody who likes thrill rides. However, you don't know how to prepare for that level of enjoyment and you don't know how to fix how your stomach currently feels. Like, that's Jasmine's voice to me. Like, you know you're going to get a, a really great performance. You know you're going to get a great vocal. You just don't know how to prepare for it. You, you, you're not ready for what it is that she's going to give you. And I mean, both songs that were performed, I mean, it was just excellent. I mean, it was more like a music video to me, kind of. Um, but again, that's kind of the era of, you know, the, the virtual performances and everything. But she sounded so good. So good. And again, I think we said this on the channel before and other people have mentioned this as well. You know, in the event that a Phyllis Hyman biopic ever gets made and they decide to go with, you know, a, a commercial singing entertainer as opposed to an actress, you know, I nominate Jasmine Sullivan to be Phyllis. Like, that. They, they even, even tonight, she kind of gave me Phyllis just in the looks department. It was like a mix of Phyllis meets Diane Carroll, if you remember. There's this picture of Diane Carroll from, uh, I want to say maybe the early 70s or the late 60s, where she has this big, long, like, flowing hair. That, that's what Jasmine was reminding me of tonight. Uh, but Jasmine just, goodness, her and Brandy, the, the two of them, the way they, they just be singing, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> like, goodness. Uh, so that was really good. The Moses Sumney um, person, like, that was the guy that was kind of like the artist that they were showcasing. I, I do wish sometimes they would let the, those artists get a little bit more stage time. I do recognize that for some people looking from the outside in, it's like they should just be grateful they're there since they're not the mainstream artists and they're being featured to get, you know, some exposure. I'm like, okay, I get that part, but sometimes right as you're getting ready to get into what it is they're doing, it goes to commercial. I'm like, dang, you know, I was just getting to the cusp of, of where he was going and then they went right to commercial. Next thing you know, I was seeing Burger King with two offers for $5. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. I think honestly, the only artist I remember whether it be like MTV Awards or BET Awards or Soul Train Awards, it's been, you know, one of those featured artists in any kind of music next, music of the future kind of, you know, uh, setup. Anderson Peck, I think, is the only person I know that pretty much almost got to do his full song. That was 2015 or 2016, no, 2015 BET Awards when he was doing, um, what's the song? The, the, the one that's on all the commercials these days. That song. You know the one I'm talking about. I can't think of it right now. Um, come down. You know, I, I felt like he might have been the only person I remember who almost got to do the full song before it went to commercial. Um, anyway, then we had the Soul Cipher. He had Shanice, PJ Morton, Shantae Moore, and Stokely. First of all, Shantae Moore, I didn't even realize that was her because at first, um, I, I guess I must have missed when they announced the names, but I was watching the other three and I'm like, who's this little young girl they got up here with these, you know, legends and stuff? What's she about to come up here and do? Because I couldn't, I didn't realize it was her. Then I was like, wait, that's Shantae Moore. And of course, Shantae said y'all were going to see her figure tonight. Like, I don't know if you got to watch, but Shantae is just built like, I'm like, how are you still built like that? And I'm like, mind you, she's like, she got to at least be 50 by now. Has to be. Has to be. She looks so good. Um, it's funny. I remember I, I got to meet her years ago i was 23 i went to one of her concerts and she actually pulled me on stage it was funny because i was the youngest one in there she thought i was in there like maybe i took my mom or something to the show i was like no i came for myself i want to see the show and so yeah she brought me on stage i got, I got to dance with her and then i got a picture at the end it was kind of cool but no the, all the vocals excellent like shantae moore sounded excellent of course shanice is very underrated i, I wish her she would have had a, a bigger career of course she sings pj morton of course he ate his song alive it wasn't even close like he just kills it stokely 
for mint condition. Again, just the cool thing I'll say about music. It's so funny when I do these award show reviews because I be talking about everything but the award show. But <laughs> the coolest thing I think that's happened in the last ten years, and I think a lot of this is due to one touring and two social media, um, is that you've seen a resurgence of so many artists who, at one point, I feel like society kind of just wrote off. Maybe not ignored on purpose, but just as the industry shifts and, you know, the industry kind of tends to focus on younger artists and keeps pushing that lane. You've seen a resurgence of a lot of artists who, you know, 20 years ago, maybe not 20 is too far, maybe 15 years ago, you didn't think you'd see them anymore. You didn't think you'd see them selling out large venues and everything like that. And now we fast forward and even pre-COVID, where in this era where, you know, you have a lot of artists like SWV or TLC or Boys to Men, um, you know, and a lot of artists who are coming from those areas who are like selling out really big tours and some of them are doing arenas and stuff, you know, maybe it's joint collaborations, but it's really cool to see that. So I was really glad that like this year, Soul Cipher was a lot of the more seasoned artists who sometimes don't get the same exposure. Shantae Moore is another artist who doesn't get a lot of the exposure she should she should get. Um, and Stokely, I think, falls in that same boat as well. And, and Shadise too. And the crazy thing is like a lot of them, they sometimes even release better music after their prime than when they were in their prime. Like I think with Shantae Moore, I think her Love the Woman album from 20, I think that was from 2010 uh, or maybe 2012. I can't remember. One, It's from one of them two. But, um, you know, that's definitely one of her best albums. Like that album along with her album, Love Supreme, are my two favorites. And her debut was really good as well, too. But um, they come out with such great projects and I just, I just want to see them do great and continue to do great. So I'm glad that in this era of I could say appreciation a lot of artists who at one point I feel like society kind of started to write off they're starting to get their just due we talked about like in Vogue you know closing out the Billboard Awards the other night or something like that and how they really just ate the stage and I'm enjoying seeing a lot of the seasoned artists get to be on the same stage as some of the artists who are current um Lucky Day and Babyface I thought first of all I love that song by the way and Lucky Day again like he had a really great project come out in 2019 but the song he currently has with Babyface I think is brilliant I talked about this in one of my R&B is Dead um, episodes and again if you watch that series it's not saying R&B is technically dead it's just talking about the shift in the music industry as far as R&B no longer being as commercial and how you know there's some really great music out there you just have to go and find it but back to my point um, I talked about in one of the episodes the idea of cross-generational collaborations where it's a brilliant idea to have somebody who's seasoned pair up with somebody who's up and coming because now both you know both acts get an opportunity to be introduced to new audiences and so that song is brilliantly put together babyface does his thing lucky day does his thing and I, I really enjoyed the song and of course it even has like the tony braxton element in it so it's like you're pulling in different audiences so somebody who may be a casual tony fan who and just enjoys hearing somebody like a tony on the radio they may be pulled into a song like the one lucky day has out even if they still prefer the tony version it's like okay well okay he's paying respect to those in the past so let me at least have an open ear and everything like that and even like again people who are really big babyface fans okay babyface is on this song you know excellent and then again for a younger audience that may not necessarily follow babyface but may like a lucky day or vice versa you know now babyface is being reintroduced okay same thing it's like i talked about this before too but even like um when quincy jones ray charles and shaka khan redid the brothers johnson um, I'll be good to you, even though Quincy Jones produced both songs. Again, perfect way to introduce a song to a bunch of audiences. You have Quincy Jones, who's a legend. You have Ray Charles, who's a legend. You have Shaka Khan, who's a legend. They're singing a legendary song, but they're doing it over a new Jack Swing beat. And, you know, pretty much bringing in a classic sound to a younger audience. Um, pretty cool. I, I, I love music. I swear I do. Um, Charlie Wilson, Smokey Robinson. I love the fact that they got to perform again. Like, one... I'm somebody who does not support the idea of ageism in the music industry. If the music is good, put them on the stage. That's where I stand. And somebody like Charlie Wilson, for the last 18 months, every song that that man has put out slaps. Every last one of them. Like, And, and mind you, even with the performance, Charlie's going to give you a full show. He is never going to... He doesn't dodge notes. He's going to get the note out. He's he going he gonna to grunt, growl, and force that note out if he has to. And so Charlie Wilson, of course, kills it. And then to have Smokey Robinson who literally would be a legend to somebody like Charlie Wilson. You know what I mean? It's so dope to just see the different generations uh, collab and do what it is they do within the music. I enjoy it all. Like, Smokey is Smokey is, is just smooth himself as well. Like, I, I pray to God that when I get that age, I'm able to look still that together. 
Like Smokey be killing it. Um, I've been fortunate to see him live as well. And so um, I enjoyed that song. Charlie Wilson, every song he's come out with the last 18 months, I've enjoyed every last one of them. So kudos to him. And the good thing is we've already given him his flowers years ago. He knows he's appreciated. And so it's cool that he's still hanging in there and really pushing. It's not like, I don't know, sometimes when artists get older, um, the music sometimes, as they still put out things, sometimes the music isn't as great as it could be maybe because the producers don't want to give them their best material because they'd rather give their material to a younger artist who can have more commercial success. But, you know, whatever Charlie and crew are doing, y'all doing a good job. Keep it up, please. Um, all right, now, oh, and then, of course, I enjoyed the, the Rance Allen tribute as well. Very, very well put together. Um, and even letting the background vocalists get some shine because they, they were killing the game as well. Like, I think more kudos has to go to some of the, the house session singers that are at these award shows because they have to have stamina where a lot of times they perform with every artist that hits the stage and they got to learn all those songs and sing it off for two and three hours. And, you know, a lot of times the burden is on the background singers to really pull the notes because sometimes the artists are going to dodge the high notes or whatever it is. And when those backgrounds are hitting, they, the background singers got to make up for whatever the artist isn't choosing to do. And so kudos to them, too. They don't get enough shine. I think we should start knowing all of them on a first name basis. You know, give give like some Stacey Campbell energy or, you know, all the women who were featured in, what was it, 20 Feet from Stardom. Uh, all of these people like that should be pretty much a household name, in my opinion. Um, I always mess this girl's name up. Snow Alligera, Snow Al Y'all know who I'm talking about. Snow. We gonna call it Snow. Um, I really like that song, Now I Want You Around. Um, really great performance. I'm gonna say this, though. Like, I'm just imagining, like, th th that paint stage set up with the background wavy thing like i to me that felt like when you had too much to drink and you lay down i was like woo the room was spinning while i was watching the performance but she sounded really really good i enjoy that show and i like the fact that she pretty much respects the lane that she's in does not try to overstep or or try to push anyone out she she rides her lane and works the lane that she's in so i appreciate her for that um the Ella Nicole performance, same thing. Ella Nicole was another artist that was being featured as somebody who was up and coming, but they went to commercial before she could really get into her pocket pocket. Um, and it's fine. You know, again, I'm sure these people, that they're just excited to be there that people are watching and their names are now out there. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see where these people get to go and what's next for them. So, you know, good luck to all of them. And, of course, they close it out with the Monica tribute. And, of course, Monica, who doesn't love Monica? You know what I mean? Um... If I had a favorite Monica song, it's probably, well, one, I really like her remake of SOS Band's Tell Me If You Still Care. I like So Gone was my favorite single, and Before You Walk Out My Life. Those two right there always knock. Um, she has a lot of really great songs. I liked the That's My Man song. That was a good one. Um, Forever, For Always. Monica doesn't really have any bad music. Um, especially in those early albums. Really great material. So I'm glad she's getting her flowers too. Um, and, and it's crazy because like somebody like a Monica, you know, I think Monica was what, 39, maybe 40. And the fact that she's done so much career-wise, and if she wants to, she still has another 25 years to that where she can just go and do a bunch of different things. But, you know, she started so young and you see the impact she was able to make and how much she was able to do. Like, She's come out with so many classics. That's that's one thing you can't take away from Monica is that she has classics. You know, One of Them Days, Why well, I Love You So Much, Before You Walk Out My Life, Angel of Mine, Not the First Night. I mean, these are classics, in, in my opinion, for, for those who've come up in that era. Um, so I'm glad she was able to get her just doing. She looks good, too. Like, looks super good. Still looks the same. Some of these entertainers just don't age. Like, Stokely the same way. He, he still looks like he did from the Men Condition days. Shantae Moore in her face still looks exactly the same. All right? Like, uh, something is in the water. Whatever they're doing, they're go on and pass us some notes and tell us what we need to do as well. <laughs> but, um, I, I enjoyed the awards show. It, I think, again, they did really good with what it was they were able to piece together and I think it came off very balanced. It was a great mix of young and seasoned. Um, and again, Soul Train Awards, you're always gonna get vocals. The singing was just, everybody just eats. You know what I mean? They're like you get the real singer singers that literally a stripped down stage, they don't need too much, just give them a mic and they're gonna kill it. I appreciate that. Anyway, share your two cents. Um, I think I covered everybody. If I skipped anybody, forgive me my bad. I'm ready to go to bed. Um, so share your two cents, I'm out, subscribe.
stop 